Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and distinguished participants. On behalf of the Director General of NITDA, Malam Kajifu Inoua Abdullahi, we would like to apologize for the fact that he's not here this morning to be physically present to deliver this keynote. He had actually prepared to be part of this wonderful summit in Lagos. But something came up this morning as a public servant. He was called to attend to uh, a very important uh, matter of national interest. And that is why he directed me that I should stand in for him to give this keynote. And as a, a demonstration of our support to this uh, summit, one of us, a deputy director from the agency, Mr. Benewa, is already with you in Lagos, to be part of uh, the panels that will be coming up after this opening. Now, we're looking at the, what we are trying to do today and the theme of this summit, which is e-government adoption in Nigeria, opportunities and challenges. Uh, we believe it is really critical and important to us at this point in time in the country. More importantly, we are talking of economic diversification. We know that there is hardly anything that one can do in the current world without efficient and effective deployment of ICT. And it is even more peculiar in the area of uh, governance uh, because if you want to have efficient government service delivery, there is no choice, no other choice, no other alternative than to effectively deploy uh, the available technologies that we have globally. And that is why this is really important to us as a go the government agency in charge of IT development in the country. In Nigeria, there have been pockets of uh, uh, digital service delivery here and there, even at the level of government and private sector organizations. But it was actually in 2012 that we took uh, that we took a turning point when we had a kind of collaboration with uh, Korea Agency for International Cooperation, where we worked with them to develop the Nigeria National E-Government Master Plan. And immediately the plan was developed, uh, a national institute, e-government institute was set up at the uh, Federal Public Service Institute in Abuja here, where a lot of uh, public servants have been trained. But it was not until 2019 when the National Government Master Plan was signed by President Muhammadu Bari, GCFR, that we now had a well documented plan of action for e government in the country. And uh, we have been working assiduously as an agency of government in collaboration with other government agencies to ensure proper and effective implementation of this plan for the country. Uh, we also, we're also aware that. Uh, we now have a national digital economy policy and strategy, which uh, was uh, championed by the current Minister of Communication and Digital Economy under the Ministry of Digital uh, Communication and Digital Economy. And what these two documents, what we are trying to do with them is to see how we can enhance government service delivery in Nigeria to break the barrier of time and space to reduce cost of governance to ensure that we can serve Nigerians effectively, and they have access to government services without any problem at a very cheap cost. And also to ensure that uh, we curb the, uh, the, the, the level of corruption in the public sector in Nigeria. Now, well, the, the question now is, what are we able to do with these plans that have been laid out, that is the National Government Master Plan and the Nigeria Digital Economy Policy and Strategy? What we, uh, the initial plan was for us to have uh, to break these plans into different segments to ensure proper implementation. But if you want to take everything at once, it will be difficult. And that is why we have divided into different sectors. For instance, the National e Government Master Plan, we have been able to derive what we call Nigeria e Government Enterprise Architecture, which is like a 360 degree view of uh, governance structure for ICT in Nigeria, in the public sector, and for Nigeria as a whole. And to a large extent, we'll be able to bring a lot of MDAs together to ensure proper implementation of this uh, Nigeria government enterprise architecture. In addition to that, we also developed what we call the NEGIF, that is Nigeria e-government interoperability framework, because we thought that most of these MDAs, 
the kind of solution, the kind of, the, the kind of perspective that they have to uh, ICT solutions and ICT deployment, they are different from uh, each other. And that is why we believe that it's really proper for us to have a kind of framework whereby all ministries, departments, and agencies of government will be able to communicate seamlessly without any issue. And you are share a lot of documents virtually and be able to work and enhance efficient service delivery for us as a, as a country. Uh, through this, we'll be able to set up what we call the Digital Transformation Technical Working Group. These are uh, to champion the implementation of this plan in all the MDs. We're we'll able to bring about 200 MDs together under this initiative, and we have trained over 429 uh, staff of these MDs who are digital champions to be able to make the national government plans in these uh, MDs. Then we discovered that without really knowing what we have on ground in terms of infrastructure, in terms of human capital, in terms of policies, we won't be able to really properly assess our capabilities and map the way forward. We also uh, carry out a, a kind of assessment of federal, federal public institutions in terms of their e-readiness to look at the gaps uh, where they are and where we want to take them to and put in place appropriate advisory services for them to be able to uh, come together to, uh, as one whole government to be able to deliver on new government services. Now, coming to NDEPS, which is the National Digital Economic Policies and Strategies, uh, it, is, uh, it, it has eight major pillars, which are very important in uh, e-governance in the country. One is the developmental mm -hmm. regulations. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are trying to see the kind of regulation, the kind of frameworks, mm -hmm. guidelines, uh, standards that we can bring out to enhance effective service delivery. People at times see regulations as a way of uh, civil development, but uh, what we have uh, in developmental regulations, the kind of regulations that can lead, actually lead to development in this uh, sector. In addition to that, we have uh, another pillar, which is digital literacy and skills. It's got that if you say you want to effectively deploy ICT, you want to enhance uh, e-governance e in the country, and you don't have the necessary capacity in terms of proficiency, in terms of uh, uh, ability to use these technologies, will be given as said, because human capital is really important, and uh, they will tell you that it's the most important uh, factor of production. So uh, we are really, uh, under this digital literacy and skills, we put a lot of uh, mechanisms in place, a lot of training programs to ensure ICT proficiency of uh, government uh, workers and even the populace at large. Then we look at the area of infrastructure, which is another component of the national, uh, the NDEPS, which is National Digital Economic Policy and Strategies. We have solid infrastructure, we have soft infrastructure, and we have service infrastructure. Here, you look at physical infrastructure that we put in place or that we need to put in place to enhance service delivery. We all are aware of the fact that now, at, uh, ICT infrastructure across the country have not been designated as critical national infrastructure. And that is part of what we are doing to ensure implementation of the national digital economy policy and strategy to enhance uh, e-governance in Nigeria, thereby leading to a national digital economy. Also, we are aware of uh, the designation mm -hmm. of the ministry mm -hmm. to Ministry of Communication and Digital Economy, mm -hmm. because from e-governance, mm -hmm. we move to digital economy. And uh, to a large extent, a lot of things are happening under the ministry to enhance this. Also, we are aware of the fact that the issue of right of way, which was a major problem in the era of broadband penetration in the country, have not been resolved. Where states used to charge about 140,000 per linear meter of uh, uh, cables, now it is as low as 145 naira per linear meter. And in some states, I know that Kano, Jigawa, and some other states are even offering free. They are not uh, charging any uh, organize, any company, any infraco that is laying their fiber through their states. This is to enhance uh, a, a, a broadband penetration. We also are aware that we have a national broadband plan, uh, the one we had before expired in 2019, and the minister put up a committee to develop under one which run from 2020 to 2024. And the major aim is to ensure penetration of uh, broadband to all the local government in Nigeria by 2024. Uh, another pillar of the NDEP is the indigenous content and promotion. We keep saying we are deploying technologies, but what are we actually doing in the country to ensure that we take our own chunk from the global 
uh, digital economy. And so the pillar is mainly to ensure that we promote and adopt local content in terms of uh, IT deployment. In fact, at NIDA, we now have a national initiative, which is the IT project clearance. Uh, there is no MD can actually embark on any national, any ICD project without clearance from NIDA. This is to enhance value for money, to enhance minimum global standard, and to avoid uh, uh, duplication and corruption, which, uh, which uh, to a large extent, that uh, project program is, is to a large extent uh, addressing. Then we look at the issue of cybersecurity. If we are moving government services online and it is not secured, we'll be deceiving ourselves. And that is why the issue of cyber security has been taken as a major pillar in NDEPS, and we are putting a lot of place, like setting up a computer emergency response team, building capacity of uh, DTW members to ensure that we have uh, a very strong team to be able to defend whatever, to protect whatever we put online. The area of emerging technologies, we all know that the world is keep, keeps moving every day. The area of artificial intelligence, virtual reality, robotics, big data, and everything. Mm -hmm. We are trying to see how we can really develop our capacity there. If I may interest all of us that we now have the NIDA has set up a national mm -hmm. center for artificial mm -hmm. intelligence and uh, robotics to mm -hmm. build capacity of young mm -hmm. Nigerians who have ideas, who may want to really uh, look at emerging technology that can assist us in the country. Also, in the area of uh, regulation, uh, I'm sorry to go back to that. Uh, we know that whatever we do online, we involve data information uh, and so on. We have uh, in place now a regulation which has received both local and international accolades with the Nigeria Data Protection Regulation. Because if you are saying people should go online, should move online, their data, their privacy is not adequately protected. No country will be willing to do business with us. To enhance trust and confidence in whatever we are doing online, we have Nigerian data protection regulation. And we have even licensed data protection compliance organizations uh, to assist organizations to comply. And between where we started and now, we see a lot of traction in terms of job creation, in terms of revenue uh, generation, in terms of creating an ecosystem, which is currently worth over 5 billion naira in Nigeria. And we are still going to do more to be able to uh, achieve it. Now, the major, pro uh, what is really important here is we are looking at challenges that we're having and the opportunities. We all know that the issue of uh, IC deployment is mm. capital intensive. Mm. And that is why mm. it's really important for both mm. pro public and public organizations to be able to work together. Government cannot do it alone. If you look at all the sectors going to the center to ask for money, health, education, transportation, and so on, we, government cannot put all the money that we need in this sector. So funding is a major problem. And we need to work together to be able to address this problem. How about that of human capital? In most of the MDAs, we saw that the level of proficiency of uh, people working there is still a bit low. And that is why we have put up the issue of uh, DTTWG and the idea of uh, uh, digital literacy and skills, which we are already working uh, on in the MDAs. Then awareness, which is really key. A lot of policymakers are still not as to the level that we want them to, to get to in the level of awareness. For example, if you make your budgetary proposal for ICT infrastructure, a lot of them don't really understand what you're talking about. So they, they reduce the budget and say, oh, let's just give them this amount. So we need to really work in that area. There are the issue of our laws, our policies, which may not really support online transactions or e-governance. We need to work on them to ensure that we put in place appropriate laws that will enhance uh, confidence and trust in DBS in Nigeria. They're looking at opportunities that are available. We know that this is a completely new sector now that uh, is emerging in, in uh, all over the world, especially in developing countries like uh, as we have in Nigeria. There are a lot of job opportunities that are available in this sector. And uh, uh, because as we grow, we're going to new uh, require people that will man various infrastructure that we want to deploy to ensure efficient traffic delivery. So it's an opportunity to create new job opportunities, new job roles for people. For instance, the NDP that I mentioned, between when we issued the NDPR in 2019 and now, we're able to create over 3,000 jobs because people may ask me, how how did we get arrive at that? Now, for organization to be able to submit the audit, they must have data protection officers. Some have changed their roles. They created the roles of DPOs, maybe move uh, their staff from one job role to that of DPO. I but companies that are now employ data protection officers. That is massive and uh, to a large extent, we'll be able to create over 3,000 jobs there. And the same thing with other 
components of uh, e-governance. E they look at, let's look at outsourcing, our time zone, the very good English that we speak here, then the youthful population, which is IT survey, and the, the, our, our labor, the cost of labor, which is still a little cheap as compared to other countries. These are things that work for us in the area of outsourcing. And that is why NIDA has developed a national outsourcing strategy of policy, which will so uh, commend the implementation. As I said, it's going to really save the cost of uh, uh, delivering government services and uh, uh, even access to government services will definitely be increased uh, through effective development of IT technology to enhance e-government. Let's look at the area of hardware. In Nigeria, we have maybe about four uh, OEMs serving over 200 million people. And that is why their capacity is still low. We, this is a very massive investment opportunity that we need to come to Nigeria to set up manufacturing companies where they can manufacture ICT equipment to serve Nigeria. And like Nigeria is the hub for West Africa and by Central Africa. People will come in here to invest. You have local market, which is Nigeria market, and you have the whole of West Africa and the whole of African market. So these are opportunities mm -hmm. that are available to us mm -hmm. that we wish to, uh, mm -hmm. to explore. Mm -hmm. And I believe uh, we, are, we are all aware of the fact that when you invest $1 in ICT solutions, eventually in the long run, their study have shown that you make a minimum of $6. So the, the country is open for business. The, the, the nation is ready for business. And we have people that uh, our YouTube publisher, which is IT Savvy, that are willing and ready to uh, make use of whatever we manufacture here. Mm -hmm. Just that we need to uh, ensure that its quality is good, that can match with any other one. And we have support service. And with all of us working together, we able to achieve efficiency of living in the country. And that is why what we are doing today, we need to sincerely commend uh, the organizers of this summit. And uh, we believe that, uh, and that is why NIDA is supporting fully. I believe that other government organizations should, should support other stakeholders, uh, private sector organizations, professional bodies, uh, 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 advocacy groups, all of us should work together to ensure that we enhance efficient government service delivery in Nigeria and for uh, foreign direct investment and people who are willing to invest in the sector to tap from what we have as a country. And we believe that all of us can achieve this and move Nigeria forward to ensure effective e-government service delivery in the country. Thank you very much and God bless. Thank you. Thank you.